The previous tutorials for Chapter 7 covered Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML. This tutorial is going to move forward and discuss cascading style sheets, better known as CSS. The basic difference between HTML and CSS is this. HTML is a markup language that's used for describing the content of the information that's on a web page document. You might also say it's used for describing its structure. So HTML gives authors the means to be able to publish online documents and to be able to assign to the text within that window and other visual elements specific properties. So you can define some text on the page as heading text, text that's going to be used to sort of uh, catch the viewer's eye and to, to uh, establish visual hierarchy within the page. Other text will be assigned the purpose of body copy. Other text might be embedded into a table and so HTML will help you to define the structure of that table whether it's a 2 by 3 table or a 4 by 4 etc. You can create lists, ordered lists and unordered lists, numerical lists or bulleted lists using HTML. So HTML handles the content that is on a web page or a web document. CSS is intended to give the creator of the page control over presentation. It allows you to customize the stylization of a page um, so that you can affect the colors of text, for example. You can affect how text appears on screen in terms of the font size and so forth that you assign to it. So CSS is really about establishing rules for how the HTML tags appear on a page. So let's take a look at that real quick and see how this works. I'm going to jump back over to Safari and here we're back at Tinkerbin and you can see we used Tinkerbin to create um, several lines of text and then to assign to those lines of text a specific structure on the page. So the first line of text is designated as a heading level one tag. And you can see it is the largest text on the screen. And then from there we have different formatting that has been attached in various ways. So the second line of text is defined as heading level two. It's slightly smaller, but both lines of text are black in terms of their font color. It's only their size that is different on the page. Well, what if I want to become a little more sophisticated than that? Well, I can drop down to my CSS window and I can assign or create a rule that will customize how the heading one uh, tag and the heading two tag appear on the page. So if I activate this first rule, you can see that it is used to establish the color property for the H1 tag. In this particular case, I've used this syntax over here in my CSS rules list to define that anytime the H1 tag is, um, is assigned to text on the page, that the browser will render that text out as red. I can change the color by simply coming over here and entering in a different hexadecimal color code. So if I want to go with blue, I can type in 0000 FF. And now, anytime the heading 1 tag is applied to text on the page, it will produce blue text sized at this level. Now, if I wanted to change the size, I could create a rule for that as well. But the purpose of this tutorial is not to teach you about CSS, but merely to show you how HTML and CSS work together to manage both the content and the presentation of information in a web page. All right, so the second example I have is I am going to use uh, CSS language to assign to the heading two tag a border. In this particular case, the rule assigns a 10 pixel border that's green and places that border around the left, right, top, and bottom edges of the text. But we can change some parameters very easily by just looking at the rule. So instead of a 10 pixel border, which is rather uh, wide or fat, I can narrow this down to a 1 pixel border. And that makes a very thin outline that then wraps around the text that's uh, currently tagged as heading 2. I can change the color to red just by typing in the word red under the value for the H2 property in my CSS window. So CSS uh, cascading style sheets like HTML, they are simply a text-based document that contains a list of rules that the browser, Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, etc., will use to render out text and objects and images on the screen that have been tagged using HTML and you can change the way in which those various tagged elements appear on screen by creating rules for their appearance. All right, so let's put this into practice. I'm gonna jump back over to my WordPress document that we were at a few minutes ago. Here it is, we had created last time uh, this document 
um, that right now currently just has um, a basic heading, has paragraph text. The first line of that text was formatted with bold using a nested HTML tag. So now I want to add a picture. And so I'm going to go up to my Insert Image button at the top of my visual editor and choose Insert Image. I'm going to go to my media library and I have an image of a butterfly that I'm going to bring in to place within this post. And we'll show that. And we'll bring it down. And I'm going to go ahead and float the image to the left of the text and I'm going to choose Insert into Post. And there's my butterfly image. This is actually a floated graphic because the text is now positioned over here on the right side of it. But what's visually disturbing to me is that there's no white space between the right edge of the graphic and the left edge of my text. I really would like to relax that space a little bit. And for that, I can use CSS. But I don't have to know CSS uh, programming code to be able to do this. I'm going to click on the image, open it back up in my, my editing window, choose Advanced Settings. And under Advanced Settings, if I look down here, one of the options I have under Image Properties is I can add spacing either vertically or horizontally. Well, I'm going to add 20 pixels of horizontal space. And I probably wouldn't go with 20, but I want you to see on screen um, how this impacts the, uh, the presentation of the information in the window. And 20 pixels will give us a better idea of the appearance of that spacing. So I'll choose Update. All right, so if I come down now, I can see on both the left and right side of the image that WordPress has added 20 pixels of space. Well, that works really well. Over here on the right side of the image now, I've got relaxed white space that really sort of looks to me a lot better and a lot more visually appealing. But on the left-hand side, I have a problem, and that is my left edge of my picture no, no longer lines up with the left edge of my text. So to fix that, I'm going to go in now manually to change the CSS that WordPress inserted into this document. I'm going to go over to my text-based editing window. And you have to sort of hunt around for this, but if I scroll down here, I will see that WordPress embedded a style rule right here to define the left and the right margins, adding 20 pixels to both of those. Well, if I want to change this, I can come down and very carefully just delete the margin left value from this style rule. And when I do that and hit delete and go back to my visual editor, you will see that I no longer have 20 pixels along the left hand side, but the 20 pixels on the right hand side remain. And so just understanding CSS without necessarily understanding the syntax for how to apply 20 pixels of padding on the right edge of the, the screen, I was able to simply let WordPress do that work for me. But because I know a little bit about CSS, I was able to go in and adjust that rule to customize it for me. So again, you may never rise to the level of being a proficient HTML or CSS editor, but if you understand how HTML and CSS work hand in hand, and you use tools like WordPress or other blogging tools that give you the ability to see the HTML and the CSS in the background and merely edit it, um, you can do uh, a lot more work to customize the design of the pages that you're creating. So if I want to see what this looks like, I can go to my preview window and this will give you a finished version of my page uh, neatly laid out using HTML and CSS but within the visual editing window of WordPress.